Good morning. Today is Tuesday, November 6th. It's a regular meeting of the members of the State Liquor Authority. Present are Chairman Bradley, Commissioner Ford, Commissioner Fan, Council Riano, Deputy Commissioner of Licensing Held, and myself, Deputy Council Ogden. The next regular meetings of the authority will be Tuesday, November 20th, and Wednesday, December 5th. Please silence your phones, and if you have to take a call, please do so outside. Um, we're going to call the items in the order in which they are signed in, first in Buffalo, then Albany, then New York City. As your item is called, please approach the podium, state your name, and speak clearly into the microphone so that everything gets recorded. Chairman, do you have any announcements? No. Okay. Today we're going to begin with two matters in New York City, then we'll move to Buffalo. Uh, the first item is in New York City is a request by Council's Office. It's a proposed emergency summary order of suspension. Queens OP 119-1616, Soul Lounge, Inc., and the agenda number is 2274A. Thank you. Mr. Armstrong. Uh, Stephen Armstrong, appearing on behalf of Council's Office in support of the summary suspension of the premises known as Embassy Lounge, located at 3302 Queens Boulevard in Long Island City. Uh, the instant matter that brought us here is the stabbing that occurred at approximately 3.55 a.m. on October 26th of this year, uh, just outside of the licensed premises. Uh, what we know at this point is both the victim and perpetrator were inside of Embassy Lounge when they got into an argument. The victim left the premises shortly after, but the perpetrator followed her outside. The argument continues on the sidewalk right outside the front of the location until the, or, excuse me, the argument continues on the sidewalk outside the front door until the perpetrator pulls out a knife and stabs the victim just above her right eye uh, and slashes her on her left cheek. The perpetrator immediately fled the scene. Uh, a friend of the victim called 911. Uh, upon arrival, the victim was immediately taken to the hospital for treatment. Uh, she had to have surgery on her right eye. As a result, we'll have at least partial vision loss in that eye. She also had six stitches for the cut on her left cheek. Uh, victim and perpetrator were known to each other and did have a prior history of some kind, uh, though we're not clear on the details of that history. Uh, but turning back to the, turning back to the licensed premises, uh, at no point during or after the incident did anyone from Embassy Lounge call 911. Uh, at no point did security guards try to intervene. When police arrived, they found partially smoked marijuana joints as well as numerous cig cigarette butts on the floor inside of the premises. Uh, when asked, the security guards working claimed they had not hadn't seen anything happen. On the night of the incident, management at the premises refused to allow police to view the surveillance video. Uh, you know, it's these last few facts that are especially troubling. We understand the victim and the perpetrator have their own history that's separate and apart from what occurred at the premises. Uh, but in recent months, this location has had several incidents where they're not calling 911 when incidents happen at the location and not being cooperative with the police when they respond. Uh, in addition to this most recent incident on October 26th, after a March inspection on October 12th of this year, which resulted in 40 summonses being issued, SLA investigator Stravalli spoke to licensee on the phone and issued a call and letter directing licensee to appear and produce records on October 19th. Uh, part of this request was due to the fact that investigators have really found a, a convicted felon working as a manager at the location. This individual had been convicted of the sale of a controlled substance. Uh, on the phone, the licensee claimed that this individual had received a certificate of relief due to disability. Uh, however, the licensee did not appear on October 19th and to this date has not complied with our request. Uh, also on October 7th of this year, a patron was beaten and slashed by a group of five men after leaving the scene of a fight that occurred inside of the premises. Uh, as a result of this attack, the patron required 63 staples in his back. Uh, however, employees at the premises refused to provide the detective squad from video, the video from that night. On September 2nd of this year, a large fight broke out in front of the premises and a woman inside the location was struck with a bottle and suffered a laceration. Uh, however, employees at the premises refused the injured woman's request that they call 911. No. In addition to not being cooperative with police, this location has become a drain on police resources. We spoke to Lieutenant Brownman, who is the Special Operations Lieutenant at the 108th Precinct, told us that in recent months this location has become a significant drain on police resources. Uh, licensee has begun using promoters to bring in crowds. These crowds have resulted in a number of 911 calls, uh, as well as several instances where there are dangerous crowd conditions. Uh, this is not the first time the location has been a problem. Licensee accepted a no contest plea in April of this year where they paid a $15,000 fine for a series of disorderly premises charges that occurred between January 2015 and October 2017. 
uh, and for coming and for becoming a, a focal point for police resources as a result of these repeated incidents. Uh, now it appears that after a few quiet months, uh, this is they are back to being a problem location. Uh, and that's another major concern for us. The last time they were facing charges like this, location calmed down for several months. Uh, our office even noted in the CNC memo we submitted to the board in April for the prior focal point case that the location had improved significantly once charges were pending. Uh, and it appears from the string of problems since September, licensee did not learn any lessons from the $15,000 fine the board imposed in May. And as I said earlier, what's most troubling is that this time, licensee appears to be trying to avoid accountability by refusing to call 911 or to cooperate with police when incidents happen. If it's primarily because of this, we recommend that this license be summarily suspended pursuant to section 413 of the State Administrative Procedure Act. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Uh, do we have any idea what type of uh, events are being promoted? Uh, I, mean, I, it, I think it's just parties. They, ha they are permitted to have DJs at the location. Mm -hmm. I think they're just uh, using that to bring in, to try and bring in crowds. Okay. And, and to, to date, there's been no uh, certificate of uh, disposition received by us for the person working there who's the felon? Uh, not to my knowledge, no. Do we know that you said they wouldn't let them view the surveillance tape Obviously, they have surveillance system. Do we know if it was even operating or no? Uh, not th we, sp the, we spoke to the lieutenant this morning again. He said that uh, at this time, the, lo the location is being cooperative, but this far they have not seen the video. I'm not sure if, uh, if it was operating on the night or what the issue with that is. Any questions? But there are other evenings when um, footage could have been provided and it was not provided. You mentioned there was a prior incident? Yes, the incident on uh, October 7th where an individual was attacked after leaving. Uh, to my knowledge, they have not, uh, at, to this point, provided video from that night either. Okay. Ready to take the vote? Yes. Y yes. Okay. Commissioner Fan? Um, this location is um, clearly a drain on police resource. I'm disturbed by the lack of cooperation from the licensee and the employees. Um, given that there was a $15,000 fine paid in April, I don't really see this going in a positive direction. The latest is um, loss of use of an eye, which is um, highly regretful. So for I vote to summarily suspend due to imminent threat to public safety and health. Commissioner Ford? Uh, and, and to add what uh, Commissioner Fan has stated, I mean, over $35,000 in fines in the past three years, uh, less than the past three years, as a matter of fact. Uh, illegal drugs, uncooperative with investigators, uh, uh, failure, failure to call uh, for 911 resources when they were clearly needed. Uh, uh, there's no question about it, not to mention the stabbing, which is no small aside. Uh, but there's no question that this place is a, a, a threat to the safety of the public, so I vote to summarily suspend. I'm going to vote to summarily suspend as well. Not only is it clearly a huge problem with the police focal point, but it's obviously a fire trap, too, given the, most of the 40 charge or summons that were written relate to violations of the uh, fire code. Um, so this was just, this is an accident waiting to happen. So I vote to summarily suspend. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item in New York is number 2210. We go to Buffalo first, Lise. Actually, uh, there's an interpreter for this matter. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Um, 2210. I stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> Alphabet Gourmet Deli Corp. 2210. I think that was in the pile, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Good morning. Stacy Weiss for the uh, applicant. And this is a request for reconsideration, uh, Alph Alphabet Gourmet Deli Corp. And Go ahead. Yes. Uh, I would like to address the reasons that, uh, that my client was denied and that was outlined in the uh, disapproval letter. Who's the client and who's the interpreter? Yes. Uh, 
I'm the interpreter. Okay. Yes, this is my oh, So hold on. So you, you have to interpret everything she's saying, okay? Can you put your name on the record as well? My, na my name is Ahmed Raji, interpreter. And this is my everything. Client. And everything I say and she says or any of us say, you need to interpret, okay? Okay, uh, and, and this is Khalid Yafe. That's my client. Yeah. And um, so um, I would like to address the reasons that, uh, that my client was denied as outlined in the disapproval letter. Uh, that, the out, that my client made false statements when he indicated that he had no relationship with the current owner. Okay, first of all, it's not, yes, go ahead, sorry. Uh, with the current, with the owner of the, of the uh, deli that he bought, that he bought. Um, it's not uncommon for immigrants who are living with uh, it's not uncommon for immigrants who are living in temporary quarters to use an address as their uh, as their mailing address. So he had used 240 Utica Avenue as his mailing address. That actually is where he worked because he was living where he was living is is only temporary living quarters because he when he first came here he moved around a lot. So. Um, and that, that is true for Faris Yafe. Faris Yafe was the seller. Yes, go ahead. Uh, okay. Okay, Faris Fer Yafe is the seller of the of the of the place of the deli that my client bought, who happened to work also at 240 Utica Avenue. 240 Utica Avenue, he also used the same address, but they never worked at the same place at the same. They worked at the same place, but not at the same time. <laughs> Okay, so it appeared that they knew each other, but they did ne they never knew each other in the past. Also, their names may be the same, the same last names, and that's because they came from the same tribe in Yemen, southern Yemen. Yafe is the largest tribe in southern Yemen, and anybody who came from that tribe in southern Yemen has the same last name. They all take that name of, the, of that tribe, Yafe. Okay. So there is no relationship between the two of them, even though they worked in the same place, they never worked together, and they, even though they have the same last name, it's because they were in the same tribe together. I'm okay, ready to we're going to stop you there, and because um, you're basically reiterating what okay. you've already submitted. Okay. And, 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 well, uh, so yes, let me finish. Mm -hmm. So we've all read what you've submitted, and unless anybody has questions, um, do you? No? A question? No. Okay. I think we're, unless you're going to say something that you haven't submitted, yeah, yes. then we're fine. I, I have one, okay, I have one more thing. Um, I, I also have some additional, uh, some statements, ATM statements to show that he paid some more money, which I just had recently. Oh, you can bring those up. Okay. $17,500 that he's paid so far towards the business, which was the uh, 
11,000 of receipts that you had already received, and this is $6,500 more that he's paid towards the ATM. So okay. he's paid some more money. Do you guys have any questions or no? No. Nope. All right. Nope. That's, we're ready, Lisa. Okay. Commissioner Fan, I will um, vote to submit this for reconsideration. Return to licensing. Okay. Commissioner Ford? Same here. Back to licensing. And I'll vote to reconsider as well. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, moving on to Buffalo. Thank you for your services, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to Buffalo, item number 2231, Tofik Galan Ali. Good morning. Uh, Jack Sanchez here on behalf of Mr. Ali. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Ali has applied for a beer license at his store located at 635 East Delavan. He was denied approximately one year ago. The denial letter had indicated the reasoning being is number one, Mr. Ali had pled to a misdemeanor in Buffalo City Court for um, selling unstamped cigarettes. Um, the disposition date on that was in March of 2015. Um, there was also a, a, um, put in the denial letter that the representative for Mr. Ali at the time had minimized the, uh, had sort of minimized his actions and sort of justified them. Um, I can tell you after speaking with Mr. Ali, um, obviously he's regretful of his actions. He pled guilty to what he did in 2015. He completed his one-year conditional discharge paid any fines associated with the um, conduct. He also operates three other businesses which do have beer licenses here in the Buffalo area, two on South Park Avenue and one on Genesee Street. Um, all of those have been operating fine without any issues. Um, based upon the amount of time, um, I would ask that he uh, be given his beer license for the establishment at 635 East Delavan. Um, the fact that he's been able to operate the three other beer lights, excuse me, the three other entities with a beer license uh, in, in the last several years, I think shows that he's responsible, understands the consequences of his actions and needs to take, you know, there's a lot of trust involved in selling beer, cigarettes, EB, taking EBT cards. So we would ask you to consider all of this, including the time and the fact that he has uh, set out this long period of time um, which approximately would be over a little over two years at this point in time. So, uh, Counselor, do we have anything outstanding on him? Anything here? I'm looking right now. Right. I'm not seeing anything too recent on any of the other licenses. <coughs> Anything, Commissioner Held? Um, no. Council, Different your ones. client filled out the application saying that he will not take an active part in this business. Can you enlighten us more on that? Uh, yeah, I, I will just have to defer to my client. Is that you? Are you are taking an are you taking an active role in this business? Because yeah. your application said you did not. Yeah, his application is open. No, I think that might have been an error. You are actively operating this business, yeah. correct? Yeah. Because your application to the board, it indicated that you are not taking an active role. No, as an active member of them. Okay, well, are you there on the yeah. premises? Yeah, yeah, Why don't you explain what your duties are to the board at that location so you can clarify what you meant by that if there if maybe was some confusion when you put forward the application? Yeah, we have this business. Uh, we opened it last almost a uh, year and a half. And, uh, we Close me. Me, just me. I mean, I uh, I open it and I have all the license in it, lotto for the stand cigarette. We need to get the beer license because the business is still down. When you say are you you are operating it though, you're yeah. personally involved, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah. Overseeing operations. Yes. Because the how many of these grocery stores do you have? We have uh, three, and the uh, 1635 is relevant. I believe there's also another application pending. And, and then do you travel or you going no. from store to store? No, what, travel, 
do you go to store to store as well? Yeah, 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 every day. So let me, ask you, yeah. let me ask you something in regards to your store at 1727 South Park Avenue. Um, considering that you have a history of selling uh, untaxed cigarettes illegally, um, are you representing to the board at the moment that you have made no such sales in the year of 2018? No cigarette is, is, is uh, the problem is the worker. He has his own cigarette almost five back. He brought to the back of the store and I don't know about it. In the end of the day, he want to go home. He taken it and he left, and he get catch outside uh, inside the store, but he's not behind the counter. Sir, did you pay five hundred and fifty dollars to the Erie County Department of Health on September fourteenth of two thousand eighteen for selling cigarettes out of yes. a package of yes, so, unlic so illegally selling cigarettes on September fourteenth of two thousand eighteen? Yeah, this is one of my workers. He already is not in the store no more. He work no, no more. He he have friend of his. His he give him cigarettes from his pocket, not from the store. Yeah, my understanding after speaking with Mr. Ali on that is that the person behind the counter um, had a pack of cigarettes that he was selling, what is referred to as Lucy's, to customers, unbeknownst to Mr. Ali. And uh, as Mr. Ali indicated, this worker has been terminated for for a cause. So why why didn't he know about it? Because he wasn't there. Yeah, because we we go everywhere in the store. From so the maybe you might have too many stores. Did you ever think of that? No, I don't think we do anything else in any store. Well, you admit to it. I mean, you waived your right to a hearing in front of the Department of Health and paid five hundred fifty dollars for that violation. So I I don't think we have any more questions. Yeah. Ready to vote? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Commissioner Fan. I'm gonna vote to deny. Commissioner Ford. Uh, I'm gonna vote to deny as well. Just. Uh, too coincidental. Chairman Bradley? I was going to vote to deny to begin with, and that kind of sealed it. The first, and just for the record, the first time you got caught, you had $30,000 of untaxed cigarettes. That's a lot. And now you want us to give you a license back, yet somehow an employee also had untaxed cigarettes, which you've already pled guilty to. So I would suggest that if you want alcohol in the future, you get rid of the cigarettes. But, uh, there's no way you're getting one in the near future from me. So I vote to deny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is in Albany. Are there any more items in Buffalo, Michelle? There's no other items present in Buffalo. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, the next item is in Albany. Um, it, a late sign in. It's 2274. It's the last item in your packet Chopstick Bistro Inc. <clears throat> Yeah. Go ahead. Does she have a translator? Does she need one? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. It says in here that she needs a translator. Do you need a translator, ma'am? Yes. <laughs> well, then we're going to have to adjourn this because uh, we don't have one coming. So, okay. Two weeks. Okay, 1120. Can you come back on 1120? We'll have a translator for you there. What language do you need? Uh, Chinese. Can you come back on November 20th? Yes. Okay, we'll see you then. Okay, thank you. Thank yes. you. Are there any other items in Albany? No other items. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're going to move to New York. First item in New York is number 2226. It's a proposed advisory. Good morning. Keith and Dano, uh, representing Empire Merchants, in favor of the advisory. I was going to be brief, but I noticed this morning that when you posted the advisory, there was a part of it that we had requested that had to do with the credit extension that didn't get into the advisory as posted. Um, I don't know why, why that is. Well, I so. can actually tell you, Mr. Dano. So I very quickly reviewed how we've passed these in the past and the advisories for the last couple of years, and we do not include that in the typical advisory that we, we issue. And therefore, it is my recommendation that the advisory that's before the members is the one that's adopted, well, not the one with the credit so period. Give, give me a second to, to, to explain that uh, when I first became an attorney before the Alcoholic Beverage Control, before the SLA, the first thing I did was um, ask for all of the advisories that went back to the beginning of time and read them all. And I can represent to the um, 
the members of the board that it, it was and is um, the, the policy of the uh, liquor authority over the years that in situations like the one we have this year to make a credit adjustment. Um, in the past few years, the, the um, uh, New Year's Day did not come out on a, uh, on a Monday. And uh, so there was no need for a credit adjustment just for the delivery adjustment. So there, there are two different issues here. One is that the suppliers, when it comes to New Year's Eve, can't deliver enough goods to get to the, the retailers in time. And so they ask for the ability to adjust, uh, adjust. and also because in, uh, in January the retailers have to refill their stock and they want to be able to do it at, um, at December prices because generally speaking, the prices go up in January. So this gives the retailers an opportunity to see what stock they need and buy in. That's the part that you have been doing in the last three or four years, uh, as uh, Mr. Riano points out. Uh, the other part is that sometimes when we get to the, where there's the um, New Year's Eve is on, like on, a, on a, a Monday, what happens is we can't get enough goods to them. When I say we, I mean the wholesalers. We can't get enough goods to them in time for New Year's Eve unless they start to buy in earlier. In order to get the retail, the, many of the retailers have plenty of money and it doesn't matter. But some of the retailers are sort of hand to mouth. And the credit schedule, where they have 30 days to pay, becomes a big problem for them if they have to buy in early to have the goods on New Year's Eve. Right? And in order to be, to be, for them to be able to buy the goods and have it New Year's Eve and also have it delivered, and these are usually people who are buying small quantities of goods you know, um, because they, they haven't got the cash, the Liquor Authority has in the past, and this goes back as far as, you know, from the beginning, have made credit adjustments from time to time to allow those people to, to buy the, the goods and still have the same amount of time that they would have because they're just buying the goods early and putting them on the shelf waiting for New Year's Eve. So I ask you to reconsider and put that back into the, the advisory. Now I would say this to you, I, I, I did not read it as carefully as I should have when uh, it was put in and I noticed that it says must be billed for the credit period. I think the appropriate thing to say would be may and to require that the, re the wholesalers who are going to do it notify the retailers that every wholesaler not be forced to give extra credit, that they, they be allowed to for this short period of time. It, it really is for the benefit of the retailers and really for those retailers who, are, who struggle the most so that they can have an opportunity to have those goods. Because what will happen is they'll buy late and they won't get delivery and then New Year's Eve They'll be hurt, and quite frankly, like most other um, retail stores, like two-thirds of the profit for a retailer take place uh, for, uh, between Christmas and New Year's. So if they can't have these goods, you're going to hurt them severely. Okay, thank you. Good morning. I'm Adam Hassan, Senior Counsel for Southern Glazers Wine and Spirits of New York and Southern Glazers Wine and Spirits of Upstate New York. Uh, we support the advisory as well for many of the reasons that Mr. Downal just uh, spoke about. Uh, on the first issue, we uh, support the extension of the December pricing for a brief period of time into January. December prices are typically lower than January. This pricing extension allows the retail trade to take uh, an assessment of their stocks and inventory following a very busy holiday period. And when they take that stock, then reorder and replenish at the lower December prices. On the second issue, with the credit extension, for the reasons Mr. Denow just uh, explained, we also support the credit extension under these circumstances. Unlike previous years, uh, this year the eaves of the holidays fall on a Monday following the weekend. Uh, they're typically lower uh, delivery periods, and the purpose of the credit extension is to encourage the retail trade to order earlier in the holiday period um, without fear of uh, their cash flow issues. They order earlier and they have that credit extension and to fully uh, combining those two elements, it allows them to uh, take advantage of the, uh, the extensions for the holiday period. Okay, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you.
Uh, Martin Mailer on behalf of the Retailers Alliance. Uh, obviously, the retailers join with the wholesalers. Uh, and if I may, I, I would agree with everything that uh, Mr. Dano just uh, stated. But I can say that I've gone that back. Hardly ever happened. Exactly right. But um, <coughs> I, do, I do go back, really, in terms of time, uh, first with counsel's office. And, and he's absolutely correct in, in stating that this is not the first time that this request has been made, and it's because of the oddity of, of the, uh, the Tuesday. Um, and I just like to, I'm not taking exception, exception to what he said, but large or small retailers have cash flow problems, and uh, this, this is the make or break season for them as well. So um, I don't think it'd be hurting anyone if, uh, if this were allowed. It, it is not the first time it's being requested. It has been accepted by the members uh, in the past, and I would hope that it, that it be uh, accepted again.
Anything else to write? Nope. Okay, we're ready. Okay, I don't know. Are we back on? Okay. Ready to take a vote? Yes. Yes. All right. Commissioner Fan? Um, I uh, vote to approve as drafted. Okay, Commissioner Ford? Um, I, I vote to approve as drafted as well, um, which I believe is pretty much the same as we did last year. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to vote to approve as drafted as well. I, I, I understand your all of your points regarding the credit extension, but we do hear from other members of the industry who are perhaps not as big as your clients, and that <laughs> credit extension causes them a great deal of uh, <coughs> problems internally. Um, so I know that the majority of them, having spoken to council and some of them, are not in favor of that portion of it, which I think is the reason it has not been in the last three that I've been here. Um, I don't know whether you even noticed it or not, but it has not been in the last three advisory, advisories we've done. You voted, so, I, and, and I am not going to argue past voting and just thank you, but I will say to you that, you know, we haven't asked for them in, yeah, in, in the last few, uh, but in, in the last few where we did ask for them, they were granted. Um, and um, although some time, some time ago, some of the smaller uh, wholesalers protested for a little while, um, th they had stopped, you know. Um, it may be because we stopped doing it that they stopped protesting. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't because it was done. It, it, it was done a number of times. But listen, you voted. Okay. I thank you very much for your time and consideration. Thank you. Always thank good you. seeing you. Item number twenty-one ninety-three, Flynn's Casino Inc. Uh, <clears throat> Martin Mailer of Mailer sent me for the uh, licensee. The licensee is standing next to me. Uh, this licensee, or at least um, through his grandfather, has had this premises on, on Fire Island uh, since, literally since Prohibition. And I would ask that the um, penalty that was uh, suggested be accepted. I'll, I'll accept. I, I, I mean, I, I, they have to obviously take better well, I, I, if you care of the supervisor, no, I've read your. your uh, there's, there's a letter attached. They, they are. They, I've spoken to the principals. They understand fully that this uh, has to be tightened up. They've met with the various uh, groups on Fire Island. They've met with uh, with the with the ferry uh, boat, as as you can see from the letter. Um, they are taking this extremely seriously and uh, understand the gravity of. Uh, what was going I mean, on. it would be a shame to have to shut a place like this, and that is probably the next place they're going yeah. if this comes back next summer. No, I'll, I'll accept. Yeah. Mr. Fan? I'll accept. Mr. Ford? I, I, I'm with the chairman. I mean, it sounds like you got a, it's, a, it's a cool idea what you do, so I'd like to see you keep going. Um, but I, I will accept the $20,000 as well. Thank you. Thank you. We have sorry, we still have mm -hmm. more, okay. Item 2220, Baiting Hollow Farm Vineyard, LLC. Uh, again, Martin Mailer from Mailer Yosemite. The licensee is here as well. Um, this, is, this is a place that's been in operation for over 12 years. As you can see, they have no other history. Um, this was a one-time aberration. I would ask that you accept the penalty. What, are they ha what, what happened here? Well, in, in actuality, what happened here is... Many of these places have problems with the, with the town in the sense of code violations, and well, I mean this area, and I realize there's a number of wineries out there. What the towns have problems with is the buses coming in and, and then making it a party scene, and that's not the intent. I, I I'm not going to disagree with you, but that really isn't what happened this day. They were claiming that because there were certain uh, temporary tents that uh, uh, there were too many people for it. But there was no, there was no problems relating to, to fights or anything like well, that. Well, and I'll just note, you're absolutely right as to my understanding with this charge, but we've had other instances at this particular location that there's nothing pending at the moment from what I can see, but I'm just being clear that we have had reports regarding buses and fights and things like that at this location. So while that shouldn't necessarily influence the acceptance of this CNC for this charge, I just want to be clear f for your client that we, we do hear of everything else that's going on. I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but I, I'm, this is a very legitimate operator that takes us all to heart and uh, does have uh, more security in place. In fact, he has ex 
really, at this point, very good security measures in place. Uh, you haven't heard of anything lately. Well, you have the ones that were there uh, noticed the, everything going on, but they didn't do anything. I'm, didn't call the police. Well, they, their own internal security takes – again, what's before you today is not, is not a fight of any kind. It no, I, I, I'm sp and I, when I speak of it, I'm speaking generally on this area that this industry that he's in – is obviously become very popular within the state. And this area is ruining it for people because of the stuff like this that's going on. This, the, the intent of this was not to have parties and people getting intoxicated at wine tastings. That's not his intent either. Well, that's what happened. Uh, yeah, if, if you may, if you want to speak. I'm very happy to yeah. speak to this. Because and the town is going to act eventually, and they're threatening to do it now. Speak into the microphone. We, we take this very seriously. and. Um, if there was to be a camp that you were in, we are in that same camp. We have uh, measures that we take. Just try to picture that these buses come in. And look, it's something that's catering to tourism. So, you know, we're, we can look at it as being an opportunity or we can, you know, make them feel like they're imposing. So we, we work it out so that they come into a greeting station to give them the feeling that they're important and they, they matter. And when you get a bus of 40 people, I tell you that they're decent people, for the most part. They're having a good time. And some of the problems are that they're drinking before they ever get to the premises. And you probably have a sense for this. Well, I'm sure they're hitting so a number have, of wineries. We have greeters that greet. But we also have added a measure of having a security guard step on the bus and say, welcome to Baiting Hollow Farm Vineyard. We want you to enjoy yourselves. What we do not want is anybody infringing upon anybody's good time. And then our greeter steps in and makes them feel warm and fuzzy because they are decent folks. And what we ran into is there was a vineyard that was out there where people were running amok, where we micromanage and do these measures and then some. And we ended up, when they were closed down by you folks, where we got that overflow. So we had to step up our game. And I would just underscore the fact that we have been around for 12 years. And we have handbooks, happy to produce. I have one with me if you'd like to see it. Our staff is all aware of the measures that are necessary. And we have signs posted. And we do our very best. But you know, you have instances with the best of efforts where, and you know this from <clears throat> all the myriad of places that serve alcohol. You get a jerk or two, and it can really hurt everybody's good time. And we're all over it. And we're very good at anticipating. But with the best of efforts, once in a while during what's been a very good and productive and, and good spirit type business, you know, you have stuff that goes on. So those moments where we can't contain it with our very significant security force, you know, we'll turn to the town. And frankly, we expect them to step up and assist. It's a right. bad message, right. I think, to give us as business owners a feeling that if we feel it's beyond our best of efforts, that we can't turn to uh, police enforcement without running the risk that our business might find itself pleading in front of you like this and be at stake. And that's Well, I mean, they, they have to weigh the fact that the people's lives could be at stake as well, and that's obviously been an issue out there in the past. Um, and I'm not saying it's been an issue at your place, but it has been at other places. I, 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 if, I, if I may, right, you're right. It's, it's an industry-wide problem out there. But uh, I'm not insinuating it's at his right. place. No, okay. I'll accept the 4000 Mr. Fan? I'll accept the 4000 Mr. Ford? I'll accept as well. you pretty clean license, so uh, hopefully this is just a one-time instance. Good luck. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next items are 2255 and 2256, Five Spot Soul Food, Inc. Good morning, Francis Buscemi. Mailer and Buscemi for the licensee. So I'm going to, well, before you get going, I'm going to withdraw charge one in the second proceeding. Okay, go ahead. We're uh, offering a CNC offer of $20,000. What are they doing uh, to matter, fix this uh, stuff? I mean, a lot of the, the, the my understanding is that uh, counsel's office or one of the attorneys in counsel's office has been checking with the police precinct, police department, that that's in uh, that the, the business is within their jurisdiction and um, 
has been told that things are going much, much better. The bulk of this had to do with noise, 311 noise complaints. Um, he's got a lot of, you know, code or local violations. But the 200 system, 911 calls the, the, as well? I, I didn't count how many, but the, somebody were, did. Yeah, there were a lot of no, uh, of the 311 or not. Oh, 100 311 in a year and 200 911. Well, I, I, from what I can recall from the file, that this really had to do with noise. Um, do we have anything, Chris, or no? This is all that I have at the moment. At these okay. And he's doing much better now, with, according to the precinct. And uh, obviously, I've spoken to him as well, explained that you can't, you know, be disturbing the, the neighborhood. And he had, it appears, a good 10-year run with no issues. And all of a sudden, in the last three years... All right. But he's modified the sound. And okay, uh, any questions? No. Okay, Lisa. Okay. 20,000 accept. Commissioner Ford? 20,000 accept. Accept. Okay. Thank you. Next items, 2261, 2262, 2263, and 2264, eat at Sherman Creek, Inc. And this is a CNC offer of $15,000. Yeah, I'm. They not, had a, I can't take this. <laughs> I, I realize. I realize that that you know that. I mean, this guy was running a bookie. Well, he was. That somebody was, it, and it wasn't Super Bowl. If I could just explain what they had done, and that's part and parcel of the uh, the gambling issue and of the alteration issue that they put in. The guy was a barber, licensed barber, and inside the place. He had a, an enclosure, a room. I think it was a glass-walled room where he was cutting hair. Apparently, the guy was also apparently running, you, you, you know, I, don't, well, I have no idea what it was, whether it's horses, numbers, whatever. No, it, was, it looked like there were odds of, on NHL games, NBA games. And, okay, so on that. But this was part and part. Again, this was a barber who was a licensed barber that they put in. They thought it would be nice to have this. You can get your hair cut, you know, some. Yeah. That, w that wasn't in his original application, was it? I'm uh, looking at that. No. No, and that's where they brought the charge for the unauthorized alteration for having this area designated for the barber shop. Well, he also had DJs that wasn't allowed. He had no workman's comp. I mean, it. he basically was running a speakeasy. That was licensed to serve alcohol, but none of the other stuff. I don't Again, know. Where are you guys I mean, a lot, of, a lot of regulation violate code violations, which were taken care How of. Do, is he we're, still a barber shop? No, no. The bar, I told him you have to get rid of the barber. You can't have a barber. So is he open? Yes. So he pulled the chair out and everything? Yeah. I mean, look, I said you can't have the barber. Get rid of the barber shop. Are you all right with And that? I was advised that they don't have a barber shop. All right. Go, uh, we're, I guess we're ready, Lisa. Go ahead. I'm at 30. Mr. Ford? Uh, I was definitely higher than 15, not as high as 30. I was more like, like 25. Chairman? I wasn't going to take anything, but <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'll go to 30 as well. So you, are you authorized to accept 30 today? No. Are you authorized I'd, to accept I'll, 25 I'll today? Tell them to take 30. <laughs> well, I've passed what I've All right. been authorized we'll to the, do. Just uh, 30. counter at 30. I mean, I'll, I'll, okay. you know. Thank you. Next item, 2196, Carps Fine Wines and Liquors, Inc. Again, this is a CNC offer of $5,000. Prohibited hour sales twice. Yeah, I didn't know that they're. This is so ridiculous. Yeah. I'll accept. I'll accept. They may need to change their hours or something. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's the, the county. It's close to the. It's crazy. I believe it happened right around the, cl you know, close to closing time, legal yeah. closing I'll, time. I'll accept. All right. Have a good day. 5,000 accept. Okay. 2273, JK's Westchester Restaurant Corp. It's a request for direction. Uh, 
Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Stephen Florick from Law Offices of Florick and Council, uh, here for JK's Westchester Restaurant Corp. So I was advised on this matter that uh, my colleague Bruno V. Jaffer Jr. was here um, previously and you, the board requested the um, licensee to come in also. So thank you. Well, and, and the reason I, that we did was he's requesting a change in method of operation that appears he's been running for several years already. Yes, that, that is correct. So I guess the question I had was why? He was under the um, um, he was under the understanding that when he purchased the company, that owner was running it also to the hours of all the other businesses in that in the area to 4 a.m. and that you know he was also able to do that. He didn't know what his own license says. He did not have the on the license, Jackie. Did he come in under the original license or under a corporate change? It's under corporate change. Well, now we have, we proposed an application for a corporate change for the method of operation. We did not. My client did not know of the hours until we did a FOIL request following this uh, current violation in January of 2018. Generally, on corporate changes, I'd have to take a bit to look it up. Is when someone's coming in, we make them sign that they acknowledge what they then they have to adhere to the current method of operation. If he signed that and didn't have any questions on it, then it really is on him. I apologize. The The corporate change would be the proposed one now for the method of operation. Um, I. Okay. Well, when did he get this place? In 2006. 2006? That's correct. And he opened it or it was already a place? It, it was open. And you bought the corporation or did you have to come and. Uh, I, I, I bought the corporation, yes. And you've been open until 4 a.m. this whole time since 2006? Yes, until I got the ticket, because I was never, you know, all the places around. And the place before me, the previous owner, that's what I bought the business. He had a bar and... Can you just clarify what are your opening hours now? Right now, we, we close in early as, as advice. Uh, from Monday to Friday, it's 11 o'clock. We all go up to 12 on Saturday and Sundays. We close early, about 10. So what are your hours? Yeah, uh, like I say, from 9 to 11, Monday to Friday. We go to 12 on Saturdays, and we close Sundays. We is, is an early close day, about 10. So, Chairman, answer your question. The license was issued in 2001, and those terms were not on the license certificate. They weren't done back then. And there was a complete corporate change where he came in on 20, 2006. Okay. And how many security guards? We do usually have one. You have been using one? Yes. And that's what you want? You want one security guard or you want two? How many do you want? If it's needed, you know, whatever you tell me that is needed, it's... Well, it's how many you need? What do you want? What do you need? Yeah. Um, what well, do you need? On, the, on the Saturday, Friday and Saturday, we could probably use one, two. Okay. Are we ready to vote? Yes. Commissioner Fan? Um, I would do two, li two licensed security guards. I'll go to 2 a.m. Commissioner Ford? Uh, I'll go along with uh, Commissioner Fan to 2 a.m. And the security guards, two? And the guards, yes. Okay. I'll Chairman? do the same thing. Seven days, 2 a.m., seven yes. days a week? No yes, no dancing. You're not, I don't know whether you're having DJs, but I don't believe the license allows you to have DJs. So if no, you are, no. I would stop that. No, we don't have DJs. And do we have anything else on this as far as stipulation other than the hours? I would have to go back into the old record. If, if possible, could, would it be, can, can we consider going a little layers because all the other bars on that same exact street are open later. He can come back in a year, but. I'm not going to go past two either. I had that written down. So okay. Well, thank you. Right. And two security guards. I'm right where they are. Okay. Uh, just to clarify, also the security guards are just on the weekends when when it's busy. You can have two whenever you want. If it helps your business, you can have two. Okay. Thank you very much. That's your call. Thank you. Well, is it though? No, I'm asking Chris. If he doesn't, if if we just gave him two security guards, is he required to have them every day? It could be a problem if I mean, I mean we could say that he can have that 
up to two. Up to two. And then that. All right, so it's up to two security guards. That's right. Okay, then you can have whatever you want any day. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, 2205 Spades Lounge NYC LLC. Good morning, commissioners, chairman. Uh, John Angrisani for the licensee. And he is? This is Mr. Damien Gregory. He is the licensee. He's the owner. All right. Uh, dismiss one, dismiss two, sustain three, sustain four, dismiss five and six, sustain seven, eight, and nine, dismiss ten, sustain eleven, dismiss twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sustain fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. He was open two months. He was, if I may say, on his in his defense, I think that the failure here was he hired he trusted someone with a security guard license. That person went with him to the community board, met with the community board, went with him to the precinct, met with the lieutenants there, met with the sergeants, and up until the police, the testimony at trial was that they were there often. They were there speaking with the security, never had a problem with them. He never believed that there was a problem with the security either. And then on July 8th, he has an unfortunate incident that occurs there, and that's when you know it's determined that the security guards were not licensed. And that basically, I think, is the biggest problem here. Well, I don't know if that's true. I mean, I'm looking at what the ALG, ALJ found, and the ALJ found that this was a focal point for, for police attention, that the licensed premises has a directed patrol because of the disturbance, misconduct, disorder, act, and activity in and around the premises. And, and that's before I even get into the question of adequate supervision and, and the security guard who the judge found was a money man for the promoter. So I think, you know, uh, looking at the seriousness of this, I don't think there's too much of a question that the most serious and among the most serious of the charges that we have here at the SLA have been sustained in this fact, in this instance. And, and you know, the, the fact is that he had a, a licensed security guard company that he was using, and he switched it to an unlicensed one. That's, that's not... That, that's not correct. That think. hired convicted felons, and, and we only charged them once with the convicted felon. I thought we should have charged them twice because mm. they stip you stipulated that there were two of them. Chairman, if, if I may, he, he hired a company that was very reputable. Mm. At some point, this company itself, they had no problem with security. The police was there all the time, spoke with the security. There was never an issue with the security. In, to remedy the matter... And if I can hand this up, he has hired a new security company, and I can show that. I hand it up. But I did this. Was this here? Did we? Did the board license this? Do you know? I've explained to him that he has to basically. He's at the mercy of this board. He's a healthcare administrator for a nursing home. He's been there for two decades. He employs 22 people in the Bronx. He's invested over $200,000 in this business. If this court, if this board, I'm sorry, would consider, and I explained to him it'll be a substantial fine, but he has installed new security. He's willing to abide by any stipulation I mean, it looks or like condition. Your licensee lied, and the ALJ found that your licensee lied. Your licensee testified he doesn't use promoters, and the ALJ found, well, why do I have all these social media postings of all these promoters? And then the ALJ specifically found, since I find the licensee's testimony on the issue of promoters to be blatantly false, I have the right to reject all of his other testimony. I find that he lied on the issue of whether there were curtains and that the security guard and what security guard company was being used. Therefore, his testimony is given very little weight. I mean, we have somebody who was stabbed at this location, we have directed patrols at this location, and we have a licensee that can't even tell the truth in one of our hearings. So I just want to be very, very clear that that's what the ALJ found. If I, if I may say in his defense, I think that the promoters were hired by the security guard, as, as was stated by... Well, not that, you know, I realize that in your mind is a defense, but it basically means he's not running his own, re his own bar. I've explained that Which to is yeah, how did, how, more how problematic. Did, how, did, how does a security company hire promoters? If, if I may, he'd like to give a statement to the board if the board would I'd, consider that, hearing him. Hold on, please. Um, Chairman, to answer your question, the application was approved by licensing board. Uh, the prior license was canceled in 2013, and we found no connection between the two. 
which I don't think there is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, he can make a statement. Go ahead. Um, I'm here as Damien Gergestan before the board. Um, with the promotion is the DJs, is the live DJs that will put up on um, the, the page where they're going to be at. That's why it was seems as if more a promotion. I'm asking for your leniency in your judgment you're going to make today because I fired the security arm company immediately because I've spoken to the lieutenant. The lieutenant was there with me before. He said the security guard have a lot of knowledge. That's why I think the security guard was up on point of everything. I fired them immediately. I've invest money to get a new security company, invest, buy a new security system for over $5,000 of the new security system. Have a um, receipt right here. New security system that's working. ID scanner that keep um, track of every patron who's going to be there. When they have been there, if there's a problem with them so they don't come back, it will show that they're banned from this location. And this is all stuff that had you been taking this more seriously should have been done when you got the license. And at this point, in my mind, there's way too many resources on the police's part and on our part being wasted on this. <coughs> and I'm not going to allow any more resources to be wasted on it, not to mention people are getting hurt. So I'm going to vote to revoke. Commissioner Fan. Uh, I will vote to revoke as well. Mr. Ford? Uh, I was going to suggest a fine that was so high that would probably be the same result, so I'll just go along with revoking as well. Okay. Just and revocation or, or any bond? Or yeah, just bond. Just revoke and bond. Everybody bond. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Items 2258, 2259, and 2260, JC Hospitality, LLC. Good morning. I'm Lindsay Farina from the Skeen Law Firm here for JC Hospitality, LLC. Um, we're here to address local ordinance violations from the town of East Hampton. But before we get into the merits of the charges, I wanted to respectfully request adjournment of this issue. Adjournment? Adjournment. Yes. Why? Um, we this were, is a CNC. What do you need to adjourn? We did discuss mitigating circumstances in our CNC. Well, that's not going to get anywhere anyway because this place has been here enough times that I have warned them enough times about this type of behavior, and I'm I, so I don't. We don't need any mitigation. So what, I'm not going to accept forty thousand. I'll take fifty-five. Um, because it's they're not getting the message. Mm -hmm. It's clear to me. I understand. So if they come, but we don't have any other open ones, do we? I don't believe so. No, there's nothing else open. I, this is the big stuff we have from the summer. And there's also not going to be outside music next summer. Uh, I would not be authorized to. I, change I the understand of operation. that. I'd have to go back to the client. I know that they would likely be amenable to payment of the fifty-five thousand dollar fine. I'm sure they would because they have it. But the outside music, and there's not going to be any lines outside the outside the restaurant. Because this is now, they were here last year. They were. And the same thing happened. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, we're going to fix it. We're going to do it. It's gonna, we're going to be better. The town's going to be happy. Well, that's clearly not the case. Um, if I may, they, they did take steps to. Well, they're not working. And I've been out there. Mm -hmm. When this place is open, you can't drive on that road. So they're not going to have line, and I don't know where they are, but they're not going to have lines outside, and the outside music's ending. So I don't know what you're going to do about the lines. You can use a beeper system. I don't. I don't. You can use the phone system, but that is it, it's gotten to the point that that they need to put less people in the place. In order for us to properly respond to all of the charges, we wanted to investigate the basis behind them with the town. Um, that was the reason we were seeking adjournment. Why do you, what do you mean the basis? Um, because some of the violations we're being charged with are, um, I guess they're, they seem to be a little bit out of the ordinary, the way these charges are being asserted they're against out, I don't know whether they're out of the ordinary or not, but I know that the town is basically fed up with you. And the number of people that are packed into this place mm -hmm. is completely unreasonable. So... If you wanted to investigate them, they should go to hearing. And if they go to hearing, they're risking losing their license. 
because that's how upset I am about this. Mm -hmm. Because they're not getting the message. It's quite clear to me. And I tried to give it to them last year, and they gave me a bunch of hogwash and walked out of here and did the same thing the next year. They have continued to beef up their security. They have limited the number of entrances to the Yeah, but they put them outside. Area. They just put the people outside. So they limit the number of entrants, and then they line them up out in the street. And they're breaking multiple town codes here. Yes. Well, they, the multiple town codes, um, some of them are actually in question because, for instance, on the 1st of September, it says that they did not have a special event permit in place. The, um, the operation that took place on September 1st did not require them to have an event permit. They're only required to have that permit when there's so a I, private event. I'm going to break right. I, I mean, I yeah, can I'm either take the CNC, which I or right. counter, um, but there's no. We're not having the hearing today. Yeah. And okay. I don't think the chairman's wrong. Commissioner Fan, you ready to vote? 75 people waiting online to enter the premises. Um, Most I restaurants will. don't have that many people in them. <laughs> this, this is a, a nationally known. I get that. Yeah. I will um, counter it 55, uh, no outdoor music, as the chairman had said. Commissioner Ford? Uh, and I will go along with that as well. That's, uh, Jesus, $97,200 in fines. How much longer before it's not worth being open? And I can tell you, if we come back again, I, I will vote to revoke. And no lines, or you guys? Yeah, no lines. No lines either. No lines. So they no better music. figure something out with that. And I realize you don't, you're not authorized to accept this, so it's a counter. You'll get something in the mail, I yes. guess. And yes, and it's no music outside next summer. Is well, that how you as, work no, out? as long as they're open, but it's. Okay. I don't think they're seasonal. You're open all year round, correct? Correct. Yeah. Nothing is. They accept the offer, then licensing needs to be advised, so yes. we can update. Okay. Uh, the outdoor music, is that something that has to be accepted by the town? Do what do you mean? I'm saying it, permits for it, do they need a permit for that for the town? Oh, I don't know. Um, not for each separate, um, not for each day that it's used. Yeah. If there were a private event in place, then they would need to get an event permit and perhaps an outdoor music permit, depending on what type of entertainment is there. But on a day-to-day -day basis, if they are abiding by the town's yeah. um, agreement, they're allowed to have it between 5 and 8 p.m. without any additional permitting. Yep. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Next item, 2243, Adams Fire Company, Inc. <clears throat> yep, 2243, Adams Fire Company, Inc. Next. Somebody sign it in. I was going to, do you want to act on this or wait? Well, we'll just second call it. We'll give him, maybe he's out in the hall. I, if the lawyer's here, I don't want right. to usurp him. <laughs> go ahead, Lisa. Okay. We'll go on to the next one. 2230, God Bless Pizza Grocery. Uh, Neil Trivedi for the applicant. I have with me uh, Naveed Khan, the president of the corporation. So he had a grocery store here. Now he wants it to be an eating place beer. Yes. Uh, he initially started. He already has a, currently a grocery store on Hillside Avenue and Francis Lewis Boulevard. When he took over this location, uh, he had some coolers, shelves um, with the pizzeria, that's how he inherited the location. Um, he is into grocery store business. He continued operating it. It wasn't very helpful, successful. Um, he asked me to apply for an on-premise license. Um, you know, with an on-premise license, you need a letter of no objection from the building department. The building department had some violation. So we said that let's apply for a grocery store. Um, and then I think this business wasn't really successful for him, so he started transitioning and thinking about it. And uh, then I think in March, April, May of uh, this year, he basically decided that he just wanted to have, um, take out the groceries, uh, coolers, 
shelves and basically make it a, as a more of a, a hangout place for a pool table and a seating chair because he's already had pizza, oven, counter already set up from the prior ownership. And what, uh, the diagram indicates he has one pool table. I see pictures that he has, has, he has well, two. He has two? Now he has two. So is this going to be a pool hall? Pretty much, pretty much two pool, like table pool tables. With well, I see they chairs. take up the majority of the restaurant in the pictures. I don't think it's majority of it. Uh, I've seen it. I don't even see 20 seats. I don't even know where you're seeing 20 seats in the pictures. No, that was one of the requirements on the deficiency letter that I received. He then added, uh, we did have uh, 20 chairs. That was one of the things on the deficiency letters. I have here. Oh, I see. Okay. There's two doors in this place? Front and the back. Front and the back. The back is just the, the exit, uh, emergency. A, I'm not a big fan of pool tables in a place that's not telling me they're a pool hall. It's, it's a pool hall, on, it, and, and it has a pizza also. People just just playing because the grocery you know, business is not going good. Next to me, there's another grocery Yeah, but then people there. are throwing balls at each other, and it... It's not that it's, big. It's a retail it's, speech, a retail uh, uh, storefront. I would say you know between a thousand to twelve hundred square feet. I mean it's two two pool tables, with uh, with a pizza, um, some you know buffalo wings and and burgers and just few minor front French fries and things. It's not you can't have too many people in that location. I is mean, this what this license is for? The EB. Yeah. I thought it was a and deli that you could so sit down and eat. Yeah. Is this actually right next to a church? I know it's not statutorily prohibited. Yes. It is. Okay. It's what, what church is it next to? Uh, it's a Seventh Adventist church. I'm sure they'll be happy about this. Okay. What are the hours? Uh, from 3 in the afternoon to 10 o'clock. Ready to vote? And are you having security? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Yes. You having security? No, he just not security. Well, I, I, I wasn't aware of it. Head, the other guy nodded. <laughs> I wasn't aware of it. But if it but is crowded, then I can have security. It's. Yeah. Oh. It wasn't. I wasn't aware of it. <sighs> How many people you are having security? Right now, I don't have. But if you need. Well, because you don't have any alcohol. Well, that's yes or no. Are you having them or are you not having I'm them? Having You're going to have a guard. Yes, sir. How many nights a week? Uh, just two nights only, Friday and Saturday. What are you what, closing at 10? 10? 10 o'clock, yeah. And weekends will be a little later, like 12 o'clock. You have to say it now. What's What are the hours? What do you want? I can say 3 to 12 then. You can open any time you want. Okay. All right, so. So you're saying uh, during the week at 10, weekends, midnight? Uh, yes. And let's say w one guard on the weekends? Yes, sir. You realize that has to be a licensed security guard. This can get you in trouble, big trouble, yes, if he's not. And this personality. Okay. I think we are now ready, Lisa. Okay. okay. Commissioner Fan. Oh, I thought this was easy. Um, it is. Uh, I was thinking of it as like a date place, you know, pizza. Now it's turned into something else. That's, <laughs> that's why I don't like pool tables. <laughs> uh, I will vote to approve uh, 10 during the week, Friday, Saturday, midnight, one security guard. Thank you. Commissioner Ford? Uh, same here, uh, one security guard on weekends. Um, I'll vote to approve as well on those grounds. Okay. Good luck. Thank okay, you thank so you, much. sir. Thank you. Thank you. Don't be open past 12. There's nobody's there after 12, is it? Yeah, that's because you haven't been serving beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how that changes oh, things. <laughs> I have another matter. Okay. Um, 2219 BOLA Operating LI Corp. How did he get Same away? appearance. Um, I believe we're here because the prior licensee uh, may have had some issues. Um, he had a violation, but uh, I have a letter from the company that... Well, your uh, client also has some pr prior history, correct? 
License and the reasons here, licensing disapproved the application and upon reconsideration, the members granted reconsideration but requested this, your client's application come to them for final termination. Okay. Well, they have many, many gas stations. So, they, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they had one notice of pleading somewhere else, but I'm not aware of anything pending right now because I don't. No, there's, I, well, I'm not either. Not either. Yeah. 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 Where's your client? Uh, my client is a corporation. I mean, I have a letter from the chief uh, legal officer from their company. Okay, well, someone can show up. But I have a letter from the company basically saying that it was nothing to do with the past. The prior owner had maybe had an issue, but my client took over a new location. I actually went to Medford uh, to take pictures. They were basically doing construction. It was a brand new location that they took over from the landlord and the prior licensee uh, had nothing to do with us applying for it, so I don't know why. I, I asked this to come here? Yes. Okay. But Is that because of the 50% grocery? No. No, um, I think you, it was the prior. I'm happy to answer more. Go ahead. And session, but uh, okay. uh, Can we privilege take and confidential. Talk? Yeah.
Okay. I vote to approve. Commissioner Ford? I'll vote to approve as well. I'll vote to approve as well. Thank you. 2232 Luciano Wine and Liquor, Inc. Good afternoon, Chairman and Board Members. My name is Christopher Laviano. This is my wife, Lucia Laviano. We're here to apply for a retail liquor store license in the town of Gilderland, New York. Open for any questions or any of you guys may have. So we just, no, we didn't, I'm sorry. The, the closest store is 0 .4, 0 0.04 miles away. Is that possible? Or is that distance wrong? The closest store away is on the eastbound side of Western Ave. So they're right across the street from you? Not right across the street. They're about uh, it should be 0.4 miles. It's 1970 that, feet. Be, yeah. Yeah. Correct. You have a store oh, uh, zeros. just pretty close to you to the east and another one pretty close to you to the west. Correct. Uh, the difference between our store and their stores, we're completely modernized. It's not a huge retail store, so we're actually looking to uh, residents of the town of Gillen, where I was uh, born and raised, and asking them exactly what they like, what they want to drink, what they can't find in the other stores locally, uh, so we can offer that to them. Um, we have a list of multiple wines and liquors that we will be having that the other stores do not currently carry. Um, I myself am very passionate about the business. Why is that? Um, I actually met my wife at a, our first date, was at a New York-only wine bar, and going into it, I don't think either of us had any idea about it. Uh, that only served New York State wine, so there was the misunderstanding about what New York State has to offer as far as that goes. Uh, we're looking to offer 20 to 25 percent dedicated New York State wine area in our store, specifically working with local uh, vineyards in Altamont, um, alongside with other ones in the Adirondacks. Is this a former residence that you're converting or? Uh, nope, it is a commercial property. Um, I just purchased it about six months ago. We're in complete renovations of it. It's coming out to be quite uh, beautiful inside and outside. Um, There's only the one residence on it's one only, side? Yeah, of the only business will be inside this building will be this liquor store. Okay, interesting enough. And you have parking? Yes, uh, we have plenty of parking. There's a parking lot directly in front of the building. What's plenty? Uh, I want to say there's 12 spots, including a handicap parking spot. And we're also going to have one of those spots be dedicated specifically to online order and pickups. Okay. Are you doing, so you're not going to do any delivering? Um, I think it's something that we will definitely consider in the future. Uh, right now, our main goal is just to get open, running, find out what the community is looking for. If it comes down to it, we absolutely would offer that. What are the two businesses located to the... Uh uh, to the west to, of you. Absolutely. Um, if you're coming westbound on your go home route yeah. uh, from work, the other liquor store is uh, Western Ave is five lanes of traffic. This is on the eastbound side. So yeah. we're. I'm sorry. I mean, oh, I'm what, sorry. Are, what are these two businesses? Uh, that's a 30,000, over 30,000 square foot office building. And next to that as well is another larger office building. So the only residence immediately is the one that's immediately next to you. Uh, correct, which that owner I've spoken with, there's actually, it's rented out to a tenant. He is completely on board with it. He's looking forward to it. The previous business I was in there prior to me owning it um, should not have been in there, and they're very happy. So is the town and the residents. <coughs> per the uh, Chamber of Commerce president, wrote a letter of recommendation for us. Yeah. What was um, there previously is an anonymous complaint about human trafficking, it says. That actually probably came from myself. I filed a complaint with the Department of Homeland Security regarding it. But prior to me owning the property, um, there was, from my knowledge, an illegal massage parlor in the uh, property, which they were gone within no, a month. No, this is coming from somebody else. Oh. Um, but they probably, you, you <laughs> I'm assuming they think you had something to do with that. I have nothing to do with that at I, all. I'm sure you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Ready to vote? Yep. Commissioner Fan. And, um, you go ahead. Vote? Yeah, no, go ahead. You sure? Yeah, I have nothing else. I'm going to vote to approve. Commissioner Ford? Uh, since there's no protest from the other closest stores, and because, uh, as you state, uh, you are, how did you put it, the only store located on the, the westbound side of Route 20, which is a pretty 
busy corridor. That's just a little bit west of Crossgates Mall, correct? Uh, yes, sir. There actually is a hundred and I want to say eighty uh, um, hotel, one hundred and eighty roomed hotel that just went up in front of Crossgates Mall. Yep. Alongside, there's about ninety new apartments across the street from that hotel that's reopened. Uh, they're under development as we speak. Yeah, I was just there yesterday. All right, I'll, I'll vote to approve as well. Chairman? I'm going to vote to approve as well, but um, given that this is, one, we don't have any complaints in t other than the prostitution, and two, that um, it's a relatively small, small store, but you did indicate that you were going to carry 25% wines and cider from New York. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our best to supply as much New York State products as possible. Um, like I said, I met my wife at a wine bar in New York that only had New York State wines. I feel like the community needs to understand the quality uh, from the wines from the Finger Lakes and so on and so forth and just trying to get it out there more. So we'll be doing wine tastings and specials around New York State wines to generate that. Uh, so you say you're going to have 25% New York product line. So your license is going to require that, given that you offered that, that, you're, that you carry 20%. Uh, yes, okay. Chair. And I'll approve. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. We're going to pull an item out of the packet. It's 2247. We had the wrong agenda item on the other one that I previously called. So 2247, it's Gen Restaurant Bar and Grill Corp. She's still not here, Donald. <laughs> okay. All right. She's going to go to the end then. Okay. Um, back to our list. 2236 Jenny's Woodside Restaurant, Inc. 2236. Good morning. My name is Frank Palillo. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. This is a uh, fault. Yes. Unex inexplicably. Um, I've represented Jenny's for years before this agency, and we've always answered. In fact, we have other proceedings currently going on. Well, that's not good. No, well, it's, it's indic indicative that we wouldn't default. And I would ask this matter be returned to counsel's office. We do have a lot going on, do we not? Two or three, I think. I'm seeing four, maybe five. Um, just because for economy's sake, I mean, I'll defer if you want to return this back. I, otherwise, I would just, I would obviously just give a fine. Other, if it's I actually was going to take the license. Yeah, that's what we don't want. I know. Oh, wow. Well. This is the eighth intox sale in four years. I don't think all of them were sustained. You Potentially charged, but not sustained. No, you took, you paid 10000 We paid 10000 recently. On two, in February 2015 for six six intoxes, and then there was another one in 2016. I'm not sure they were all intox. I think they may have been after our sales. I think that's much of a defense, but the bottom and line. And another one in The bottom line is we're, 17. Engaged, we're engaged in here. Yeah, I'll send point. it back because I was going to cancel it. It sounds like it's on that, heading in that direction. So I, 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 I hope you're wrong. I'll send it back to council. Thank you. Commissioner Fan. Send it back. Commissioner Ford. Back to council. Okay. Thank you. 2235 Steeplechase Inc. Darn it, I just put that one back. <laughs> so one question before you get going. Who who was arrested for the sale? Were they employees? No. Apparently, I mean, this premise has been here for a while. Apparently, there was a guy who was setting up a business in the bathroom. We weren't aware of it. The police were, and that's how we found out about okay. it. Okay. We've since tightened it up, and it's not happening again. I'll accept. I'll accept. Your board? 2,500 accept. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 2189 Fish Box Restaurant Corporation. Good morning. Bert Levine for Sammy's Fish Box Restaurant. So I was actually going to reject this, but then I realized that you didn't have notice until the last sale. Uh, if I may. Yep. 
Sammy's Fish Box Restaurant has been known throughout the Bronx and has been licensed since 1977. We have never had a problem. He has three mm. other restaurants as well. Never had a problem. This came up as an isolated incident. It's the same bartender with the same undercover. And this just happened. That's why I said I was going to reject it, but I'm not, because well, you didn't know until the last one. We, we didn't know. We didn't know what, uh, and, and to make matters worse, or better for us, my client has instituted a policy in all his restaurants. Everybody will be carded, whether they like it or not, because we don't want this to happen again. It's never happened since 1977, and all of a sudden we get hit with this. Is the bartender gone? <sighs> to tell you the truth, I recommended he be fired. My client refused. He said, look, this man has worked for me for 15 years. He's got a family. He said, I can't fire him. He said, but they put, a fi they put notice in his file, any more transgressions, he is gone. Is he taking ATAP, alcohol training awareness? The bartender? Not to my knowledge. I, ca I can't comment on that. Well, then I'm going to, I'll accept this along with that he take one of those classes. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Ford? I mean, excuse me, Fan? I'll accept. I'll accept as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. What about a scanner? Do you have one? Do they have a scanner? Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I, I, make I, that can't, I can't. I, I want to make that a condition, too. I can't comment on that. I'm not sure. So is this a, a counteroffer, technically? Um, uh, take the uh, 15000 uh, plus they've got to get a scanner. Get a scanner? And take the class. And take the class. That would be for this specific bartender, though. Yes. Everyone. Yes. But the class you can take online. It's not a big deal. No, I, the, well, scanner, the scanner or scanner is about 3500 uh, with all due respects, the $3,500, it's a lot of money, but that's not what's going to be the crucial item. The bartender, I know, I believe he, he's, uh, a, he's Pakistani. Now, I don't know him personally, notwithstanding the fact that I've represented this restaurant since 1977. Right. So, I mean, the, the class is not a big deal. The, the, I it, don't should know. Take a, it should take a couple hours. But um, so this is a counter offer. Are you authorized to accept this, or do you want to get a letter and come back? I'll accept it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Twenty two oh eight one sixty Dykeman Restaurant Corp. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners and morning. Council Secretary. Good morning. Mark Weinstein for one sixty Restaurant Corp. Uh, doing business as Republica. Um, Mr. Chairman, we're well aware that there are pending uh, disciplinary charges at this time, so I would ask that this particular application would be adjourned until those matters are, are heard before you the... You can, uh, but I don't know that it's going to change where I'm at. Um, I, to date, they haven't had dis disciplinary charges obviously no but the reason and and i'm the one i think who who approved this along with commissioner kim or were you here for this no it's commissioner kim and there's no way we would have approved this with what he's asking for well at the time we did we did what we did because we didn't want him open these hours right. and now it's clear that the community board doesn't either so i mean we'll, i'll adjourn it for the next one for the stuff to go away but i'm not going to change my opinion well, I mean, I, assuming, I mean, assuming... It'll only make it worse, charge, actually. It's it, not going to make it better. Assuming if the, if the, for argument's sake, if the charges were dismissed... No, I didn't, uh, I'm not even talking about the charges. The, 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 the <coughs> application to simply extend the hour, hours from three to four is a rather modest. I would respectfully submit. I, it it, it is, but, but when we did this initially, the community board was against this place. And the reason that he didn't get four then was probably, I'm guessing, because they didn't, they wanted him shut at two. And I'm not going to just, you know, override that now. Nothing's changed. In fact, now he's got charges against him as well. So, uh, but well, let's just adjourn it and you can play it out. Let's I would appreciate adjourn too. What, when do you think you'll be done? This is a very big case. It's going to take a while, as far as I can tell. There's a number of charges that are pending, including including very serious charges. Are you going to go to hearing on this, or you do you know? 
we, I, I don't know if I'll be handling it, Mr. Chairman, but we will be going to hearing on it. In fact, this is going to be we'll running be putting a long a, time. It's yeah. So I, why, why don't we, we why don't we do this? Ready. We'll vote on this now, and if he wants to reapply after that, he can. They may disagree with me. Well, if if we're going to do that, I would put then if we're going to if you're going to hear this now. Well, I mean, I don't want to adjourn it for six months. Is what I'm saying. I, I, then I'll make my okay. my, oh, well. my argument, which I think that you have before you, right. that the corporate principle here. There, there are four corporate principles, uh, most notably Mr. Sanchez here has another establishment, and he's had it for how many years? Eight years, I believe, without any incident. You have Mr. Straw, who's had four places. Uh, uh, right now, I believe he has three under license, one of which is a hotel. It has not had an incident. Um, the I actually, It's a beautiful place. Uh, it has four levels. Um, notwithstanding these charges, he hasn't had any, any disciplinary record to date. Um, I'm not going to hear. I'm not going to argue the merit of these charges. I don't even have a bill of particulars. Okay. No, and I wasn't right. even. Yeah. I wasn't even considering right. but, the charges. But, but given that, and given that, if that to date there is no disciplinary record, I would submit that there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to extend from three to four. And also, there are there are, there are other establishments in the area that are open till four. And in the spirit of competition, he should be able to have an establishment that's on an equal playing field. Okay. So I would ask that this that this application would be submitted. I would also say that you did a, a very um, extensive renovation to the property, um, really built built up the property where that corner is a is a real linchpin of of development in the area. Um, what about the rooftop music? There's been they close at twelve o'clock on the rooftop. I would think you right. Know, they always close at twelve. Right. I would think getting to be November, you're going to be closed. Right. Well, we're closed. Period. Period. Right. right. But and, and our application did not did not ask for an extension of the rooftop. We didn't go there. We this was specifically to the other areas of the premises where he was licensed. So it wasn't. That's not part of this application. Okay. Any questions? No. I Commissioner think we're ready, Lisa. Fan. Okay. Commissioner Fan? Um, I'm going to vote to deny given the community board's objection here. Commissioner Ford? Uh, with all the noise complaints and so forth from the uh, community board, I'm going to vote to deny as well. And I'm going to vote to deny because I think this, I'm just going to keep it at the status quo. I think that I would not have approved these hours in the initial application, and now he's got to worry about the charges, which could be pulling hours back after that. I mean, granted, he has very little history here, but he hasn't been open that long either. So I would also though say that again, his record as a as a, a, a as a proprietor of another establishment was was is perfectly clean, and so is one of the other. And and, and and that like I said, the, the they know it does. To, but the limit on the hours initially, in my mind, was because of where this is, and that's a problem area. It's on Dykeman, which we get a ton of complaints about overall, not just about him. And that's how we ended up at his place, because we get complaints. The community board is active, and they should be. And that's why they're not going to – places aren't going to be open up there till 4. There are places open now, but as they get in trouble, they're going to lose their hours. So thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Item 2215, 1624 El Milagro Corp. Lisa, what number was that again? 2215. No one? Okay. Did someone sign this in? 2215. La Hacienda Roasted Chicken. Okay. Let's move on. 2190. 315 Sigma Inc. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. This is Daulat Raju Bhatija, contact person for 315 Sigma Can you talk into the microphone, sir? I can't hear you. This is Daulat Raju Bhatija, contact person for 315 Sigma Inc. in Rock, uh, Lawrence, New York. One so you're the representative? Yeah. She's on the... Sorry, what's your name? 
My name is Daulat Radu Bhatija. And what's her name? Her name is Shabana Mangani. Okay. Can you explain to me what a lottery game room is, as I'm seeing on the diagram for the premises? That there is a lotto room. There's a lotto. There's a lotto. And in the lotto, there's New York there's State play. lottery tickets, or are there other gaming devices and other gaming going on? Other in that gaming room? too. There's other gaming as well. Yes, yeah. Well, they have they have a I don't know if you've seen the numbers game that right, comes up. So that's okay. Quick right, I'm just trying yeah. to yeah, yeah, quick draw, right? And then you have the game that just keeps running periodically every five minutes or so. Okay. Oh, and every like a mega million, everything. Okay. That's what I assumed it was. Okay. Yeah. So, can you briefly ex tell me the history here? The husband was licensed at this location? Husband was location. Talk into the microphone, sir. I cannot hear you. Okay. The husband was not here. It was he's not here. He's here, but he was not the owner of the license in that premises before. He was the availee. Yeah. He took someone he was using someone else's license. Yes. Is that correct? So. Is that am I following that correct? I think so. Okay. Yeah, why doesn't the application indicate, Jackie, that there's uh, no adverse history at the premises? Why does it? Why doesn't it? Because it would seem that if he was availing at this place. There was a EB license before. This location, yeah, let me look into that. And do, do you have a food preparation area? Let me talk to her. Yeah. Do you have a food preparation area? Uh, yes. What is it made of? What do you have? I mean, we have grocery. No, but do you have somewhere that you make and cook food? Um, no, like packaged food and like hot dog machine. We okay, have. so that was what you tried to file as an eating place beer, but now you're just going to be a grocery store. Yeah, but when we bought the business, they had like previous owner, they had the EB license. So that's why we bought that. Hmm. I mean, what we have here, it's the, I think it's the license the 1992 to 04 is so far back in the listing of licenses that we gave you. Um, that it's too far back. Yeah, it's okay. too far back. Okay. Can you, do you have beer in your place now? No. Where, right who, now took, who took these pictures? This was previously. I Previous, think. yeah. When? Before the, the temporary license we had. Oh, okay. The what, the temp run out? Surrenders. The temp run out? Yeah, temp. 315 Sigma. And you bought this in what year? 2017. 2017? Yes. But you've been running the store since 2008? Um, previous no, previous owner. I took, I took in 2017. And you were working for the prior owner before? Yes. Which your husband was running that store, correct? I mean, we have two cooperation. But the previous owner, your your husband, is that where the availing happened, Jackie, or was it before that? He surrendered in October of 2017, the former owner. Nine before. Where's your husband? Does he work there now? Um, yes. He's working at the store with you? Yes. And why is he not applying? Because he wouldn't get it. The, the, she, they're not applying because his wife is applying for it, for the store. She what? bought the store. So her husband is helping her to operate the store. Looks like it was denied before for lack of interior access to all sections and the lack of a food preparation area. Right, because they were because of for EB an EB license. EB the two license. licenses that were disapproved were both for EB licenses. Okay. And we were unclear about the access, interior um, access directly into that game room. Because mm -hmm. okay. it didn't look like, according to the diagram, that there was. You had to go outside to get into it. Yes. So yes, we weren't going to license right. that. Kind of. Might as well take the thing.
All right, so his so your husband did have a license in 2004, correct? Yes. At this place? Yes. And we revoked it. Um, he lost the license. I'm talking to her. He lost the license, correct? Um, no, he had the license. He had no license? In 2004, was your husband the owner of this store? Yes. And he had a liquor license? Yes. And he lost it, correct? We took it. Yeah, that, I don't know, like, detail about it. What year did you get married? Uh, 1999. Okay. And then he did he sell the store after that? Yes. To this other guy. Yeah, Barkat Ali Rajabali. And now he now you bought it back in October of 2000 or in oh, 2017. I bought you bought it, I know. I bought it. Do you own the building? No. You just bought the business. Yes. Do they have enough groceries in here? This looks like it's, I don't know what this is. I mean, it looks like a head shop. It is a head shop. I think it is. It's called like, vape, whatever, whatever. <laughs> just dated himself. He just dated himself. <laughs> just what do shop. you call it now? <laughs> vape shop. Oh, vape, vape shop? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. No, we have everything no like smoke shop and groceries also. <laughs> Cigar and smoke shop. Yeah. Yeah, no, most I, of the products, though, seem to be above, like the refrigerator. Yeah, I mean, they're not it's, selling they're not, any of these. It's not so. Do you sell any food? I should say, do people buy the food? Food, yeah. Like. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Ready to vote? Yeah. I'm going to vote to approve. Commissioner Ford? I'll vote to approve as well. Chairman? I don't even. I'll vote to approve. I'm at a loss. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know Good why, luck. but I am. Good luck. Next item is 2217 Tipsy's Bar and Lounge, Inc. 2217. That's an unfortunate name. <laughs> oh, good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning, members of the authority. Aurelia Tavares, John Springer is on this application, but he couldn't make it today. So I'm covering this application for Tipsy's, located at 106, well, Tipsy's um, Bar and Lounge Inc., located at 10607 Jamaica Avenue, Jamaica, New York. Um, I'm here with the applicant for the um, bar. Um, I just wanted to forward, uh, to uh, put something forth to uh, the members of the authority. I, I go to this community board often, community board nine. Um, it's a very, they're very inconsistent in their, their rulings. And one of their policies is for restaurants to close at 1 a.m. Uh, that's their closing time every day of the week. However, for bar taverns, they permit them to close between two and four. I have a resolution for one of my clients in that area who's literally like two blocks away from there, and this is their policy, so I don't know why they're giving them a hard time. And if their, their objections right, are We don't have policies like that, so they can have their policy. It doesn't mean we're going to follow it. Okay. But um, my, is this place zoned for dancing? There, there's no dancing here. You, you, your application says there is going to be dancing. Um, dancing with recorded music. This area is not zoned for dancing. We will not have dancing there. That solves that problem. So you're not going to have dancing. No. Dance, no. You're not going to use. You're going to use the outside area. No. No, you're on, uh, Chairman Bradley. And not sort of take removing the yard off the license. We're gonna, well, I don't have an objection to that. I'll remove that. And what are the hours? What are the and you know, I don't know if the community yeah. board's watching. They're obviously they're they're clearly opposed to this. My problem with this community board is they have not at all indicated what they're basing their opposition on. It's their policy. Is, um, just to oppose. Well, then they should state why they're opposed. No, that's why I. It, there was in the the, the um, first, I was going to say, The on. first thing the first indicates one. why they're opposed? I don't see it. No, based, on May 8th, based on it saturation. says, oh, based on saturation. Yeah, but it's a tavern wine. We, 
And there's what do no you want? What, what's your what's your hours? She what just, your requests? She wants to close 2 a.m. every day. She's not, and she usually closes at one, but she wants the option to close at two. Holidays are coming and things of that nature. This is not a, you know. I don't even have a menu. What kind of food is it? Um, she showed me the. Um, they're working on the menu now. I'm not the. I'm not the filer on this application, but she put something together because I saw that we were missing it. Just something handwritten. I don't want to submit this. Well, no. Can you tell us? Tell what kind like of food, what kind of food is it? Um, Indian food. Okay. Indian food. You have another Indian restaurant somewhere? No. Is your first one? First one here, but I have back home in Guyana. And are you working with a chef, or who's making the food? My my son-in-law, he work at the restaurant in the kitchen already, and my daughter going to be serving. This is a bar, though, right? This isn't, OK. We did have a menu. It's just like appetizer. Apparently didn't copy. OK. It's just appetizer. You didn't give me the copy. Mm -hmm. Are you having any security or no? No. No? No, it's going to be family run. It's her and her kids. and. Sunday. And no DJs, no promoters. No DJs, no. Okay. Just no live music. No, just um, what do you call it? Live music. <laughs> Recording music. Okay. And no uh, hooker or anything like that. Hookah. Hookah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we hope not to have any hookers there. But. I, I I tend to butcher the English language quite regularly. Are you gonna if you are you gonna have you're not gonna have hookah? The smoking thing. The thing. If you're gonna have it. Let them know because we, know you can it, apply at DCA. If it's allowed. Yeah. It is. You can apply. So can we add hookah to that application? Because that's a very big Indian, uh, Latin American yeah. kind of thing. And I don't want her to have something that she's not, gonna to say something ready. that she's okay. not going to represent. Okay. We're ready, Lisa, I think. Okay. Commissioner Fan. Um, I am going to vote to um, approve with uh, no dancing, no DJ. With hookah, um, 1 a.m. across the board. Commissioner Ford? Uh, I'll do that and, you know, come back in a year, and if everything's okay, then we'll take it from there. I, I do note that uh, you did get the unanimous uh, vote of the Public Safety Board Committee, I'm sorry, and you went back twice before the full board, and I, I think you improved substantially your votes in favor. So. Uh, for that reason, I will vote to approve as well. I'll vote to approve as well. No, also no promoters and no live music. There was some discussion about the outside yard as well that was on the application. That's not licensed. It's not going to be licensed. Okay, yeah. it's right? being removed from the license. Being removed. Thank you. Yep. Okay. No dancing or outside areas. What's that? No, they're saying. They're thank, you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next no. item. Twenty-two eleven. Cozy Cafe Corp. Frank Palolo again, offering compromise before you. Yeah, letter of warning accepted. I'll accept. Accept. Thank you. 2238, 55 Long Island Corp. This is another case where my client never received the pleadings, and we do have a pending matter with the agency. So, I mean, we would answer it if we'd gotten it. I was at council. Less than 30 days in there. Yeah. First charge. I, unfortunately, my system is frozen. I can't look it up. Yeah, I did that. Oh, there we go. Um, it was returned chairman. unclaimed. We did receive another proceeding, as I explained, and we've put an answer in. And I think there's a hearing next week on that one. What do they have pending, Chris? I'm trying to look it up on my computer. Oh, tonight. okay. Yeah, uh, disorderly. Disorderly. Then we've got, and then they have more, more coming. More since since September fourth. Yes. Let's go. Just know. licensed June first. Jesus. I was at cancel, so. We need to be heard. Okay. Can we put it over to uh, eleven? 
20? Oh, no, we're not putting it over. We're either sending it back or canceling it. Yeah, send it back. This is a big problem. I have a feeling it's going to be, sir. But I do all right. think we have to get all the facts. Only because it was, that there's no indication that there was even a notice. Oh, there was notice attached. All right, I'll send it back. Thank you. Back to council. Thank you. Back to council. Thank you. Next item, 2192 Gallus, Inc. If I may, um, we'd just like to put this off to the 20th. My client could not be here today and wants to be here. Okay. I was actually at dismiss. For, for the two sustained charges? Yeah. Blocked exits, have, have they been corrected? Um, it's only the blocked exits. They have been. It was blocked by, I think, a... You were at subs uh, dismiss because you didn't think it was proven or... Because I just didn't think it was a big deal. I mean, what did they do? It if they don't have a large history, what I would suggest is I would uphold those two charges then maybe either give a nominal fine or a letter of warning. Because you're right. Can I, you live with that and not make the guy come back? 500. It's two charges. I'm going to dismiss the other that, four. It's, it's okay. It's up to you. I'll let him come back. No, I just. There are certain clients you feel more comfortable with and certain you do. All right. Then I we'll think, I think you should get the same thing either way. You should so. be happy with $500. So. No, if you want to bring him back, I get it. I don't. I think you should be happy with $500. i will make the. Yeah, I don't think that's All right. So I'll dismiss one, two, five, and six, sustain three, and four, 500. Thank you. Sure, Ford, agree? Same. Okay. Yep. Thank you. 2270, Gato Verde Sports Bar Corp. Gato Verde. Twenty-two seventy. Right at the bottom. It's an over. This is. Is that Gato or Gato? Gato. 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 I think it's green. Is there an art to how you sign these in? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. You saw the. He likes to take a break. Yeah, he likes to take a break. Yeah. No art. <laughs> There's no art. Um, with reference to Gato voted, this was on the calendar four weeks ago. To give me the. This is a corporate change. Community board. We didn't meet the community board because of whatever, but I could not get to the community board meeting because I was at community board two that night, but I am going tomorrow night for Gato Verde, so we can put this off for four weeks, and I think by that time, we could probably take it off the calendar altogether. Okay. I think all they want is the opportunity to right, meet. So what, what's, what's six, oh, four weeks, so six something? December 5th is the is December. Enough? Yes. 12-5? 12-5 is enough. That's really the only issue here, really. Community yeah. board parents, yeah. Yeah, it's just if it was it was a bad storm, it was a winter storm that time. Okay. Next item, twenty two oh nine Knights Ridge LLC. Twenty two oh nine. This one, uh, Mr. Donnie, who granted it to be held over to eleven twenty. Thank you. Okay. That's what I had asked for. Okay. Items held over, twenty two oh nine to eleven twenty. Next item is twenty two fifty one Tazer L T D. Tozer. <coughs> Tozer. <laughs> not Sorry, doing so I'm, well. You know, hey. tell me to, I'm not <laughs> correcting. I'm just, Sorry. <laughs> I can wait, but yeah. still no. Um, what, I'm sorry. What, was what is it? It's 2251 22. Tozer. Oh, I got the wrong one. Thank you. Can I ask counsel a question? Yeah. No. Did I put 2500 in and then someone came back and said it's got to be three? Because the offer I have is 2,500, the board calendar says three. I may have I had have to up it. three from you. Then I, but when I, I was there, they asked me to up it. The offer of 3,000. Is this your signature? Yeah, There's no right. doubt. That's I just right. didn't remember doing it. Yeah. And which is standard. So I think I had put an offer in on my own um, letterhead, and when I was at the, the authority, someone who had the case said, we got to go 3,000 on this, and I said. You initially did some editing. We'll take 3,500. I thought three was where we were. I'll take three. <laughs> I'll accept three, too. I'll accept three. Thank you. Okay. Next item, 2184, 1325 CCPJ Corp. It was 2184. I am appearing on behalf of Mr. Flynn, who had a personal matter to attend to. He indicates that um, the matter is scheduled for the community board on 12-5. And he asked that this be held over past that date. Okay. So 
Do we, are they going to vote on it that night? or? I don't know if he's appearing or if that's the reason for the vote, but he asked for after 12-5. All right, give him the next one then. Okay, I what? don't know what that is at my fingertips, but I will, it's the next after December 5. The one after that is um, December 19. Thank you very much. Perfect. Next item is 2237, Eight Tuxedos, Inc. Thank you. <coughs> See ya. Sorry, what is it? 37. 2237, Eight Tuxedos, Inc. Good afternoon. Joseph Levy here on behalf of the applicant, Eight Tuxedos, Inc. You have they removed the bar? Yes, yeah, so you have a CNC before you. Um, I, I appear today to give you a little bit of context and color with the CNC because it's not completely straightforward. Uh, I was not the original attorney of record who put in the original license application. The person who did that put the bar in the wrong place on the diagrams and no one knew that. Um, until we went back to the community board to seek to do an alteration to add a new bar. Much to our surprise, we found that the bar was where we wanted the new bar to go and the bar that was there was not supposed to be. So we went to the community board, we filed the alteration application which was pending with the authority and has been for some time. Um, and unfortunately, this happened in the interim. When we discovered this, we did advise them that the stand-up bar they were using as a stand-up bar was not supposed to be anything more than a service bar and couldn't be operated that way. And they have changed their method of operation since then to make sure that it's not operating as a stand-up bar. Um, so anyways, I think that's, I got that. that's the history. I, I know it's confusing and it's, you can imagine my surprise when I tried to do an alteration and the community board told me that there's already a bar there. Right. Um, right. So anyway, that's, that's where the confusion lies. I'll take the 3,000. 3,000 accept. I'll accept as well. Thank you. And actually our alteration application did get disapproved when this came through. So now we have to seek a reconsideration there and okay. we'll okay. be oh, seeing you again uh, shortly. Talk to Jackie. No, it's still pending. Everything came in on 9-12. They're still open. We didn't, I didn't do anything. We got a disapproval for it. I'll All look right. into it. Okay. Okay, 2271, Cuba LLC. I'm just appearing to withdraw this application. Thank you. Thanks. How's, how's that? <laughs> I think we all thank you. 2266, Gallinilla, Inc. 2271 with, was withdrawn. Uh, 2271 was withdrawn. <clears throat> Good morning, uh, Matthew Leone for the licensee. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners, morning. Council, all members of the board. This is a, a conditional no contest plea to settle the matter for a $3,000 civil penalty. 520, I see 415, I see 430, I have yet to see 520. I know, it, it, it was late this... Uh, <laughs> or, or early, depending on how you... Oh, th yeah, that's... Uh, I'm that's usually true. up by then. I, you know, this uh, th this uh, place is not known, it, it's, it's not a, a usual occurrence. This bartender um, uh, he said that he had a couple of friends in there and, uh, and their girlfriends, they were waiting for him to, uh, to finish up cleaning up. Um, but he did allow them in there. Um, he knows it was a mistake. He was, um, he actually was fired and then rehired a, a few weeks later. He came back very contrite. Um, and uh, <clears throat> the bar has instituted, they have a written policy that, uh, that all the staff uh, has read and they've signed um, explaining the, uh, the closing procedures and uh, and uh, the fact that nobody's uh, allowed in there uh, after closing. All right. I'll accept. I'll accept. I'll accept as well. Thanks. Next item, 2204 Los Amigos Deli Corp. <clears throat> uh, this is also a conditional no contest plea to settle the charges for a $7,500 civil penalty. Um, the, uh, there was some consumption of beer uh, on the premises. Uh, that has now been... The gambling machines gone? The gambling machines, yeah, they were, they were um, I think, confiscated. Or they, they, they were taken by the police, and there were two other machines that were not in operation, that are not in operation, that are <coughs> still in the room, but the room is locked and closed, and uh, the vendor... 
that supplied these machines is uh, supposed to be coming to uh, to pick up the, uh, the these two additional machines that uh, are not in use. All right. Ready to vote? Yes. Commissioner yep. Fan? Yep. Uh, I'll vote to accept. Board? I'll accept as well. Accept. Okay. Next item, 2222 E&C Stop 1 Mini Market Corp. And this is a conditional no contest plea for a $10,000 civil penalty. Same thing. Yeah, it's the same. Time. It's the same thing. This again, though. This is uh, Nassau County thing that's going on here. Or? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's it's Hempstead. Same, same vendor of the Joker Poker. I don't know if it's the same vendor, but I I, I know it's it's a common situation where the these the store owners are approached by the vendor and the vendors are putting these machines in and then there's a question of whether or not you know they're they're actually joker poker machines or what you know what the uh, or, or whether yeah but with the machines then then the guys want to drink on the premises and it's a supermarket yeah so i mean if these guys come back again with these charges and the same for the last thing they're going to lose a license yeah i, I i've i'll take the 10k okay thank you very much Ten thousand accept. I'll accept as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. There were two other items that I called uh, previously that nobody. Yeah, you can recall those. Okay, twenty-two forty-seven Gen Restaurant Bar and Grill Corp. So if we take this and he doesn't pay, since he already owes five, yeah, is he going to get? Gonna I would rightly say would convert. To a cancellation? To whatever the alternative tenant. Yeah. Okay. saying the five wasn't paid? Well, it's imposed, but... It's oh, paid. it is paid. It's I'm paid. sorry, it's it is paid. 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 Okay. I said this would just... Because he surrendered. He surrendered. That was my concern. He surrendered. The alternate will still be a cancel and bond. Okay. All right, I'll accept. Yeah. I'll accept. 7,500 accept. Okay. Um, 2215 was 1624L Milagro Corp. We had somebody sign in for that. All right, sustain one, two, and three, dismiss four and five. And really, five shouldn't have been dismissed because it's clear they had a manager. I don't think we ever asked them. Um, but dismiss it. I'm at 10,000. They did scrub the That's a pretty bad evidence, stat. yeah. They, they cleaned up the blood on, right. on, a, on, a on the bathroom floor. What'd you say you were? 10,000. Okay. Commissioner Ford? Yeah, I'll go along with 10,000. Yeah, as well. 10,000. Okay. Is there anybody else here? Joe, are you here for anything? Nope, just to hang out. <laughs> All right. Anybody need a break? No. No, nope, let's rock. Okay, 2183, Melody Cafe and Restaurant Inc. 3,500, accept. 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 2185, Vortex Hospitality LLC. Uh, sustain one, 3,000. 3,000. 3,000. 2186, Buen Ambiente Bar Restaurant, Inc. Sustain one, dismiss two, 3,000. Uh, charges were dismissed in criminal court for charge one. Does that matter to us? No. Uh, okay. 3,000. 3,000. <clears> 2187, 138th Street Tavern Corp. Return to council's office. Is he? Is this recon because he wants to do a hearing on this? Um, yes. Well, I'll send back to councils too. But just to be clear, and that this three thousand isn't going to be available after hearing. Yeah. Same here. Back to council. Assuming the charges are sustained. 2188, 525, drive through Inc. Hmm. Accept. Accept. 4500, accept. 2191, D Zone Grocery and Deli Corp. Withdraw charge 5, accept. 5000, accept. Accept. 2194, MBK Wilkie Inc. Sustain charge one, uh, 6,000. 6,000. 6,000. 2195, 
Tradiciones Mexicanas Corp. Accept. Accept. Thousand accept. Okay. Twenty-one ninety-seven, NYL Diamante Corp. Accept. 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 Twenty-one ninety-eight, Clifford Sunrise to Sunset Markets Inc. Accept. Six thousand accept. Six thousand accept. Twenty-one ninety-nine, <clears throat> Fuad Mohammed Hassan. Dismiss one, sustain two, cancel and bond. Cancel and bond. Cancel and bond. 2200, Jaden's Inc. Withdraw two, 7500. This is one where he had been permitted to send books and records in before, correct? And, uh, He might have been operating under that previous assumption. I mean, regardless, I think the question is, is the necessity to keep them on the premises is the actual issue that comes up under the law. Gotcha. Um, I do realize that there's an extensive history here. That being said, the charge itself and the way this all seems couched does not necessarily um, mean that there should be a high fine. I was at 3,000. You think 7,500 is high? No, no, no oh, I don't no. mean that. No, I do not. <laughs> I, th I think more five figures and up is high. All right, Ford, where are you? Uh, I'm thinking 3,000. 3,000. 2201, the ranch rest and bar of Guiana, Inc. 1,500. 1,500, yep. 1,500. Exactly right. 2202, 159, Railroad Market Corp. Cancel for the record. Cancel for the record. Cancel for the record. 2203, La Vida Loca Restaurant and Bar Corp. 5,000. 5,000. 5,000. 2206, uh, Village Wine Cellar, Inc. Accept. 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 2207, Village Wine Cellar, Inc. 5,000. Oh, it's Wait, that's at 6500. 65. 65. 2207. Oh, I got the wrong case. Go ahead. I'll accept. Accepting for 2207? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> 2212, Cositas Ricas Equitarianas Corp. <laughs> I'm at cancel for that. both of them. Oh. This was, uh, you needed a. Uh, I think this is just a family issue. You need a drawing board to. I don't know. Like, I don't know that there was intent on. here. That was my problem. And then they have another one, that, which is 2214. With the same, it's a different, it's the yeah, same, same issue. I just had 5,000 on both because I don't want them. I, I just didn't see the you intent think? to avail. I thought it was just a screw up internally. Right. For ignorance, basically. I'll go higher than five if you want, but I don't want to see them lose their license. I mean, their businesses. Okay. I'll go with five each. Five each. So five each. 22, 12, and what's the other one? 22, 14. 14. Okay. Okay, 22, 13, Candela's BK Restaurant, Inc. Accept. Accept. 2,000, accept. 22, 16, D. Milton Sports Bar Corp. Cancel for the record. Uh, sustain charge one, cancel for the record, yes. Can we do, is there a bond available or no, Jackie? There's no bond. Okay, cancel for the record. The last claim, cancellation. Cancel for the record. 2218, Frazzy Kenjus LLC. Sustain one and two, cancel and bond. Cancel and bond. Cancel and bond. 2221, JDRC Grill Limited. I was at 10,000. That's right where I was. 10,000. Count or 10,000. 2223 El Compadre Restaurant Corp. I'm going to let you guys decide this because I'm. 22, which one? 2223 El Compadre Restaurant Corp. I think I'm going to take the 15. Where are you at? Ford. I, I will accept the 15. Did you accept it too? Yep. Okay, 15, accept. 
2224 Cafe Delo Sport Inc. I'm at dismiss. dismiss one, two, and three. I don't know why she did the hearing, to be honest with you. Commissioner Ford? Uh, dismiss? Yes. Yes. Okay. 2225 727 Brentwood Liquors Inc. Accept. Accept. 4000 accept. 2227 Corona Mini Market MI Corp. 6000. 2227. Why is it 6000? Because of history. That's the normal. That would be the normal. Okay, 6000. 2228 Indigo Restaurants Inc. Sustain one, dismiss two and three, sustain four, five, and six. I'm at 15. Uh, 15. Sure, Ford. 15,000? Yep. Yeah. 15,000. They're only open a month. Yeah. They're heading down a bad road. That should get their attention. Uh, 229 Macumba Bar and Restaurant, Inc. Uh, cancel and bond. Cancel and bond. Cancel and bond. 2233 Double Kitchen, LLC. Accept. 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 2234 Joseph and Larry Corporation. Accept. Accept. 2239. Don Cano Wines in Port Corp. Accept. I would just note that the board uh, should accept this based on a month. So there should be a month set for the month suspension. So if it's going to be December or January, it just makes it easier. I'm not, uh, that's my understanding. Yeah, so the month of December suspension. Oh. Commissioner Van? Yeah. Yep. 50, month of December. Yep. 2240 Z2 Diner and Lounge Inc. 3,000. Like 3,000. It's the same guy assaulting people. Uh, all right, 3,000. Don't know. 2241 Mexican Entertainment of Webster Inc. 5,000. 5,000. 5,000. Oh, these staples are stuck together. 2242 Jason J. Burnham. Accept. 6,500. Accept. 2243, Adams Fire Company, Inc. I would, I would go with, uh, it's a volunteer fire company, uh, 500. Oh, no, this has only been in business since 17, right? 1,000. 1,000. 1,000. 2244 CJ Diamond Cafe Inc. Counter 10,000. 10,000. 10 counter. 2245 Mahoney Fairmont LLC. Cancel. Uh, is this surrendered? So can, uh, cancel and take the thousand. Commissioner Fan? Yes, cancel and bond. Actually, can we? Yes. Chris? Cancel and take the thousand. Because they offered a thousand, they didn't offer cancel. Oh, you'd have to counter with that. You'd have to counter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, counter then. They shouldn't get off for the thousand for that. So counter offer, cancel and bond. Is that? Yes. What about you, Commissioner? Or a thousand if they want to pay it. I don't care how sure. we. Sure. I don't, I don't care how we get it. It'll turn into a bond anyway. Right. Well, they've offered a thousand. Thousand civil. Right, if they, they don't are. pay, it'll right. turn into a thousand bond. Okay. So the counters cancel and a thousand. Yes. 2246, 44 Wilson Avenue, LLC. Accept. 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 2248, Fresh Pond Tavern, Inc. Accept. 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 2249, La Mise Medelli Grocery Corp. Cancel and bond. Cancel and bond. There's no bond available. So you can cancel the record. 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 2250, 1208, Stratford Avenue, Inc. That should be 6,000. 6,000. Yeah. This week or something? No, 6,000. Okay. Counter 6,000. 6,000. Counter. 2252, Avenue Seafood Corp. 7,500. 7,500. 
Accept. Accept. 2253 YTS Corp. Do I not have that? I'm at 5,000. Yeah, counter of five. 5,000 counter. Okay. 2254 VMU Corp. I got counter at 7,500. I wanted to ask some questions, but I'll well, take bring 75. Them in. You want to bring them in? No, I'll take 75. Counter at 75. Counter at 75. 2257 S. Weeb Holdings, LLC. Cancel and bond. Yep. Cancel and bond. Cancel and bond? Okay, cancel and bond. 2265 Spark Group, USA, Inc. Accept. Accept. Uh, cancel and bond. Accept. 2267 L Familiar Restaurant Inc. Accept. Letter of warning. Accept. Accept. 2268 25 B Group Rest Av LLC. This item has been held over to 1120. 1120. 2269 uh, 296 Sandwich LLC. Accept. Accept. 2272, Restaurant De La Mora, Inc. I, they wanted to come back. They wanted to come in and they didn't come. I was at cancel. I would only going caution on? about canceling on a default because those are often not upheld at the court. It so that's is. usually why I save money. Yep. So 10? Yeah. Unless you wanted him to litigate it. 10 is you okay. So we're countering a 10? No, there's no counter. No counter. It's, a, <laughs> it's a default. <laughs> 10, Lisa. 10K? Yeah. Okay. Um, Chairman, do you have any other items? No, we're done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.